Welcome to 2023 and to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're looking at some of the most exciting cars of the moment, including the all-new £47,000 Honda Civic Type R. We also have Porsche's new Carrera 4 GTS versus AMG's first electric SUV. And a Bath is back with its latest hot Fiat, but not as you might expect. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Maserati has revealed details about its new electric Grand Toro. The second generation Gran Turismo is due for launch later this year, with Maserati confirming that the EV will be joined by a petrol powered V6. The electric Folgore model will produce upwards of 745 bhp with a range of 280 miles. It will produce almost 1,000 foot pounds of torque and accelerate from 0 to 62 miles per hour in under 3 seconds. Details for the ICE car are still scarce, but we can expect it to be both cheaper and lighter than the 2.2 tonne Folgore. Few brands these days manage to capture the sense of pure fun quite like a bath. Fiat's in-house tuning division never fails to raise a smile with its loud and retro hot hatches. The 595, though, has now been with us in some form since 2008, so it's about time the historic Scorpion badge adorned something new. And here it is. It's called the Abarth 500E. The first proper electric hot hatch. Based on the new Fiat 500, the Abarth 500e is faster, angrier and totally in your face, just like an Abarth should be. The regular Fiat styling has been transformed with bigger wheels, a body kit and a shed load of Abarth badges. The famous Scorpion logo has been refreshed to represent its new electric intentions, but there's no mistaking it. The old model's famous chrome moustache has gone from the front bumper, replaced by simple Abarth script with the badge moving up onto the bonnet. At the back, there's no record Monza exhaust system to flatulently pop and bang, but a bath has remedied the lack of pipes with some artificial noise from internal and external speakers. It replicates the fabulous noise from the petrol-powered 695 Competizione, although quite how convincingly remains to be seen. The interior has also had a sporty makeover with a new steering wheel and new sport seats. It's worth remembering though that this is the basic model and if the petrol one is anything to go by there will be plenty more versions to come no doubt with lashings of carbon fibre and Alcantara. It's also worth pointing out that on paper the new 500e doesn't seem that quick compared with the latest hot petrol versions. It is quicker than basic 595s though and again, we expect faster versions to follow soon after launch. The front-mounted electric motor sends 152 brake horsepower to the front wheels for a 0 to 62 mile per hour time of 7 seconds. Less powerful and slower than a 695, but a Bath says the new EV is quicker around a track thanks to its instant torque and improved handling that comes with its larger dimensions. The Abarth makes use of the same 42 kilowatt hour battery as the Fiat version, but the range has dropped from 199 miles to just 155 due to the increased performance. It does have the same 85 kilowatt DC charging rate though, so it can be topped up quickly, going from nearly empty to 80% charged in 30 minutes. On paper then, the new Abarth is less powerful, slower and less noisy than the existing petrol one not to mention a lot more expensive. It goes on sale this summer, with prices expected to start at around £35,000. It still has some way to go then to win over petrol heads, but it's at least the start of the electric hot hatch revolution. Or is it? After all, Mini already has its own EV, and while it isn't quite as quick as the Abarth, 
it's no slouch getting from 0 to 62 in a respectable 7.3 seconds thanks to its 181 brake horsepower electric motor driving the front wheels. The chassis is an evolution of the one found in the Cooper S hot hatch, so Mini's familiar go-kart handling is here in abundance, helped further by the Mini Electric's low centre of gravity from low-mounted batteries. Like the Abarth, its modern take on a retro design works well. We especially like the alloy wheels designed to look like British plug sockets. But while both of these cars appear similar on paper, it's the Abarth we're most drawn to. Its cheeky character and small size are what hot hatches are all about, and we can't wait to see even hotter versions in the near future. With Mercedes now on its way to the front of the EV race, its EQ lineup is getting bigger and bigger. With electric cars beginning to fill almost all of the Merck's niche body styles, this new EQE SUV seems like a solid mainstream offering. Not to be confused with the regular EQE, a four-door saloon acting as an electric alternative to the E-Class, the EQE SUV is, who'd have guessed, an SUV. Sitting below the EQS SUV, the EQE looks like a scaled-down version of its big brother. In fact, without looking at the badges, you'd do well to tell them apart. The EQE is smaller though, and it remains a good-looking car in its own right. The design is familiar and in keeping with all of Mercedes' EQ models. But there are some interesting details like the silver running boards. Not only are they handy for getting in and out of the car, but they also improve the aerodynamics. The AMG 53 model, meanwhile, gets a special grill panel inspired by the Panamericana grills of its ICE stablemates. It's on the inside, though, where the EQE really impresses. There's no real dashboard to speak of, instead just a huge panel of screens called the hyperscreen. It's the same system found in the Biggie EQS and features all of your controls as well as the usual array of infotainment goodies. The 56-inch panel comprises three separate screens in all, each with its own functionality. But it's not just the hyperscreen that takes your breath away. The rest of the interior is just as fancy, with beautiful materials and the signature turbine air vents. We're yet to receive full details on the powertrain, but we expect them to mirror what's available with the EQE saloon. That'll mean a 90 kilowatt hour battery and roughly 250 horsepower. It will also be capable of 170 kilowatt DC rapid charging, allowing it to get from 10 to 80% in half an hour. The range is 342 miles, although the AMG will be about 260. And on that note, AMG has released some performance figures for its first ever electric SUV. As standard, the EQE 53 will come with 617 brake horsepower, but spec the optional Dynamic Plus pack and the figure creeps up to 678. 0 to 62 will take just three and a half seconds onto a top speed of 149. As well as the extra oomph, the AMG 53 also gets improved brakes, adjustable damping, and a host of styling tweaks both inside and out. The seats, steering wheel, and pedals are all AMG specific, and even the graphics on the infotainment have been adjusted. However, is the EQE SUV a bit too late to the party? After all, there are now two Tesla SUVs to choose from, and of course the BMW iX. Now we'll get the styling out of the way early. 
It's not a looker, particularly from the front, but thankfully once you're inside it, you can't see it. What you can see is one of the best cabins on the market. It's clean and simple with everything from speakers to the air vents having been blended into their surroundings. There's an interestingly shaped steering wheel, a big pair of bright screens, and all the switches are almost hidden in what BMW calls shy tech. It really is beautiful, with switches disguised within a little wooden control panel in the centre console, next to the elegant crystal-like iDrive controller. There are numerous powertrains to choose from too, including a sporty M60 version with 611 brake horsepower and 155 miles per hour top speed. As impressive as the BMW is though, we can see the Mercedes good looks winning over plenty of buyers. It goes on sale in the spring with a starting price of around £90,000. After the break, Porsche's latest 911 GTS and the new Civic Type R. Coming up, the ultimate daily sports car from Porsche. First though, The Honda Civic Type R. A hot hatch hero with an iconic lineage boasting some of the greatest front wheel drive performance cars in history. For years it's been Japan's answer to the Golf GTI, but now its reputation as a blue collar everyman sports car could be in danger. You see, Honda has just announced the pricing for the all new Type R, and it's quite a lot more than we were expecting. At a bit over 30 grand, the old model was perfectly placed to take on rivals from Renault, Hyundai and indeed Volkswagen, but now it seems Honda is taking the Civic up market. There's no easy way of saying this, but here goes. It's £47,000. Yep, you heard that correctly, 47 grand. That's 4,000 more than a Golf R, 1,500 quid less than a new BMW M2 and about the same as a Porsche Cayman. Crikey, it better be good then. Well, under the bonnet is the same 2-litre engine you got in the old car, this time producing an extra 9 horsepower. That may not sound like a lot, and it isn't. But the new car can hit 62 from rest in 5.4 seconds, 0.3 seconds faster than the old model, and hit a top speed of 171. At this price point though, the Type R isn't taking on Hyundai i30Ns and RS Megans. Instead, it's in the firing line of the big all-wheel drive German hyperhatches. To keep it competitive, Honda has been working hard to ensure the front wheels can handle the 325 brake horsepower. Naturally, it has an impressive mechanical limited slip differential, as well as a new six-speed manual gearbox. The tyres are wider too, 265 section Pilot Sport 4S's, and there's plenty of aero trickery designed to keep it planted in the corners. The overall design is much tamer and classier than the old car, but the big rear wing and diffuser retain some of the old car's histrionics. The brakes have been upgraded too, and there are some new driving modes, calibrated to get the most aggressive performance from the car. It must be said, the results are impressive. It just set a new lap record for front-driven cars at Suzuka, beating the old car's record by just under a second. Nürburgring is up next, where we expect it to excel once again. The big question is though, is it worth the money? Less than a second off a lap time and 9 extra horsepower doesn't seem all that impressive in the real world, but this new Civic does feel a lot more grown up than before. For starters, there's no fake carbon fibre or pretend vents to speak of. The overall shape is a lot nicer too and the interior feels more premium while still maintaining the red seats and aluminium gear knob that make a Type R a Type R. But is it a match for the Volkswagen Golf R? 
Unlike a GTI, the Golf R sends power to all four wheels, and with 316 bhp on tap, it easily beats the Honda to 62 in 4.7 seconds, making this the fastest accelerating Volkswagen currently on sale. The extra performance comes courtesy of a tuned version of the same turbocharged 2-litre engine found in the old Golf R. Naturally, the chassis had some upgrades too, with stiffer adaptive dampers, a new progressive power steering system, bigger brakes and wider tyres. It's lower too, but it's not just the hardware that's been altered. And there is a fancy new torque vectoring system that can split power between the front and rear axles and even between the two rear wheels for maximum grip on even the slippiest of surfaces. Where the Golf is lacking though is where the Civic shines, engagement. The old Civic was one of the very best driver's cars at any price, and the new one looks set to be even better. Ok, it is expensive, but with that comes exclusivity, and possibly one of the all-time great hot hatchbacks. The 992 Generation 911 has been with us for nearly three years now, but Porsche is still busy adding to the already extensive lineup. And this is their latest creation, the Carrera 4 GTS. Up until now, most GTS cars have been regular Carrera S models, dressed up with some option packs and special badges. And while that's no bad thing, it seems buyers wanted a little something extra, so this time Porsche has delivered. Based on the all-wheel drive Carrera 4, the new GTS can't be replicated by ticking some boxes on the 4S configurator. This time Porsche has set up the GTS to provide its own distinct driving characteristics. Bridging the gap between Carrera 4 and Turbo, the GTS gets bits from higher up in the 911 food chain. The brakes are from a Turbo, the wheels are from a Turbo S, and various bits of the interior are trimmed in the same race text material found in the GT3. The 3 litre flat 6 engine produces 473 brake horsepower, 30 more than you get in a regular 4S, and the highest output this side of a 911 Turbo. That also makes it the quickest regular 911 you can buy, hitting 62 miles per hour from rest in just 3.3 seconds onto a top speed of 192. Purists will be pleased to learn that a 7-speed manual gearbox is available, while an 8-speed PDK transmission is a no-cost option. The manual gets an ever so slightly shorter gear stick than lower spec cars to provide a shorter throw. To give the GTS a dynamic edge over the regular 4S, it sits 10mm lower to the ground, while the turbo brakes improve stopping power. The extra power comes courtesy of some increased boost pressure and some alterations to the cooling and intake systems. And it seems the tweaks have been effective. The Carrera 4 GTS set a Nürburgring lap time of 7 minutes and 25 seconds. That's 4 seconds faster than a 4S and only 3 seconds off a Turbo S. As a point-and-shoot weapon then, the 4 GTS seems like the ultimate everyday 911. However, it isn't the only rapid all-wheel drive sports coupe out there. Enter the Jaguar F Type R. Hardly a spring chicken anymore, the F-Type has been around for ages, but this latest iteration is the most capable yet. With a supercharged 5-litre V8 under that gorgeous long bonnet, it's certainly no slouch. It produces a mighty 567 bhp, enough to power it from 0 to 62 in 3.7 seconds. Now that's not quite as quick as the Porsche, but among the glorious cacophony of V8 noise, you will be smiling even more. 
Like the 911, the flagship F-Type sends power to all four wheels, although there is no manual gearbox available. It does without active suspension and carbon ceramic brakes, giving it a more old-school nature. It is the perfect car to load up with luggage and blast across a continent with. The interior is beautiful, but it's the exterior that's always been the Jag's biggest selling point. And then there is the price. The F-Type R starts at £103,000. Of course, it's by no means a cheap car, but it does look like good value next to the 120 grand Porsche. It does feel a little old-fashioned, though, and perhaps the last of its breed. The Porsche seems much more up-to-date, and with all the driver involvement you'd want from a four-wheel drive coupe, it's surely the ultimate daily driver. Join us again next week on Auto Monday Al as we bring you some two-wheeled fun with the new Motor Guzzi V100.